What's up guys? So this is gonna be the week two recap of conductor training school down here in McDonough, Georgia for Norfolk Southern. Now, as I talked about in the previous video, week one, all the basics are, are coming into you and they're all starting to make sense. You're going through, you know, some different scenarios and stuff like that. And you're just getting, again, the basics down of how to do the job. Now, when you get to week two, you're gonna be thrown off a little bit on the schedule. It's all gonna be night, night shift work. So you're gonna come in, um, our, our shift right now is four to, four to one. So you're gonna come in at four o'clock in the afternoon. You're gonna start off your night with lecture. And then you're gonna do that for like an hour and a half, two hours. You're gonna go on, on a break for dinner. That might be anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours long. And then you're gonna come back in for the night portion of it, uh, which is all your hands-on. So you're gonna be doing all your hands-on work out in the dark on the railroad. Um, you'd be amazing as to how much changes around you at night, even though you've seen that place so many times throughout the day, when it's at night, it's a whole nother animal. So you learn how to work with your, your lamps, you know, your, your lanterns, um, you have a radio with you every night that you go out, um, and all that good stuff. Now, again, our week two so far has been nothing but wet. We've been out in the rain pretty much every night except for one night. And, and actually tonight, I lie. So three, two out of the past four nights have been a wet night. Um, coming into week two, the very first thing you're gonna do uh, for here is you're gonna start off on your midterm exam. You're gonna come in, take your midterm. If you pass that, you're good. If you don't pass it, then you get a chance to retake it the following day. If you don't pass it the following day, you're done, you're sent home. Week two is gonna be a lot more hands-on. We're gonna be doing all your switching movements, how to do a simple switch from a main track to a siding. And then you're gonna learn how to spot cars. You're gonna be doing car spots. And you're gonna be doing your C-102 rule um, for standing equipment, for how to properly secure standing equipment. Um, you're gonna go through how to do ground air applications. And you're also gonna keep doing your static rotations at the static part. You'll go out there every night, first off, as like a warm up. It gets you loosened up. It gets you back into the groove of things of going in and out of equipment, walking around equipment and stuff like that, getting on and off for when you're down actually in the yard running stuff. Throughout that, you're gonna get, be getting more into your operating rules, diving a little bit more deeper into different types of territories, what the rules are for different types of territories and how to properly operate on those territories. Also, your homework is going to be doing the same thing like it was before. You're going to have homework the night before for the stuff the next day. You're going to have some e-learning. Um, and then you're going to start going through all your manifest paperwork, all your clearances, your track authorities, um, your IWOs for industry work orders, uh, your form Ys, um, everything that relates to how, to how to read them, how to understand what type of training you have, how to go through your manifest and identify cars, like all that stuff is going to be broken down. Uh, it's a lot to take in, but you get used to it after you start looking at it, you know, uh, how to keep your position of train stuff updated when you're dealing with hazmats. And, and again, hazmats a big week of part or a big part of week two, uh, which we actually just did tonight is how to, you know, go through the protocols for how to properly switch hazmat cars, where they're supposed to be placed in a train, all that kind of good stuff. But week two is, is a lot of fun because you're all hands-on. Everything that you did week one is coming together. They're not telling you now how to properly get on and off equipment. They're not telling you how to do all the smaller stuff because now all that's second nature and now you're applying it and now you're learning further ahead. Um, we're, we're making cuts, you know, we're, we're switching out cars and all that kind of good stuff. Um, last night alone, we actually spent a whole night out there for just about three and a half hours of just doing industry switching. So we come out, we take a car down, we cut off, we take it out, we place it on the main, come back in, get another car, take it out, place it on the main, spot it, kind of do a lot of stuff. And we went one at a time. So it's some, some things that we do are in groups of like two or three guys and we all kind of rotate doing different things of whatever we're trying to accomplish in that group. And other times it's one-on-one, it's, -on -one. it's one person at a time goes out and does this. Um, again, the other night we were doing spotting. So we had a train of like six cars and each person was responsible for, we, we were given a, a work order um, for a job saying that these cars need to be in this order and they need to be spotted at these locations at a specific point. Uh, and it was our job to go out and split the train, break it down and then spot the cars according to that work order. And it was all in the rain, it was a fun time. Um, tonight we did our, our whole A6 class again, so we went over and did the class one brake test again on, on a longer train, uh, broke, got broken down into groups, had to go through and do an A6, uh, A6 test, class one test, and then the other group would go, but before that group would go, the group that just went would go into the train and mess stuff up 
um, to see if we were paying attention. So as we were doing our inspection, we could call out things that were wrong and stuff like that. So it was a good learning experience. So again, week two actually goes by fairly quick um, because you know you get back from the hotel about 1 a.m., you go to bed around 3, you wake up at 11 or 12, you get lunch, kind of hang out, do some studying, go, in, go into uh, to school at you know 3.30. Um, and yeah, it, it goes by fairly quick. The one thing I cannot stress enough, and I don't think I hit this on the first video, is please be on time for class. Do not be late. Don't, don't be straggling in there. Um, they, they have a sign that says, you know, it's like, a, it's like a learning objective, and it says, you know, to be 20 minutes early is to be on time, and to be on time is to be late. Um, they strive by that. We've all been getting there about a half hour early, 15 minutes early or so, but if you're just kind of straggling in, like the last minute before you're supposed to be there, they might say something to you. Um, but punctuality on being t on time and stuff like that is very important for school. Um, don't take notice of it. So to wrap up with week two, again, it's a lot more hands-on stuff. You're applying all the fundamentals of what you learned in week one to week two. And not that they're not holding your hand anymore, but they're just stepping back a little bit and telling you, hey, this needs done, go do it. And they're going to watch you do it. I mean, if you do something that conflicts with your safety or something like that, they're going to stop you. But they'll let you go. And then at the end of it, they're going to be like, well, what did you do wrong? What could have you done better? And what did you do right? You know, they'll, they'll debrief you on it. And uh, it's, it's really cool because now we're, we're getting a little further along where we can work a little bit more independently uh, to where they don't have to tell us this is what you need to be looking for. They're just going to tell you, go do it, get it done. And we go out and get it done. So wrapping up with week two, we take our hazmat exam on tomorrow, actually. Yeah, we take our hazmat exam tomorrow. That's pass, fail. Fail it, you're done. There's no retest. You shouldn't fail it because it's open book. There's absolutely no reason why you should fail this test uh, whatsoever. So that's, that's an easy, easy task. After tomorrow, we go back to first shift. We're on week three. Uh, we have two days of, of learning, and then we have our two days of evaluations, and we have um, only one lecture all next week, and our signals exam is next week, and we're done with conductive training anyways. So next week is going to be a breeze because we only have really one and a half days really of being taught, I guess you could say, or, or actual classwork. Um, we have, again, two days of evaluations, our field evaluations are Wednesday and Thursday, and then Fridays are final. We are done. Uh, our signals exam is next week as well, next Tuesday. And then after that, we go into week four, which is our RCO training, our remote control operator training, where we actually get trained how to run trains um, with a remote control box. So it's going to be kind of cool. We actually get to run the locomotives, and it's going to be a good time. So we are almost there. Week two, again, it's halfway point. It's, it's been flying by quick. Uh, it's, it's been a great time. And our, our new instructor that we've gotten, Troy, he, he's great. Like, he's very serious about the job and what he teaches, but yet he's very, I don't want to say laid back, but he's very personable. Like, he doesn't make it hard. He makes it fun. But he knows when he needs to be serious about stuff, which is awesome. So that's kind of week two in a nutshell. Again, it's a lot more just hands-on stuff than, than really anything else. Tonight was probably the longest lecture we had because it was all of our hazmat stuff. Because uh, we had to go through the book. We had to look at everything. We had to learn about the charts, learn about all the placards and stuff like that. Now, coming from the emergency services, I could relate to the ERG, the response guide, stuff like that pretty, pretty well. So I, I know my way around it a good bit. So I understand the stuff a little bit better than the other guys do. But the railroad side of the hazmat stuff is, is pretty pretty tricky. Um, a lot of attention to detail that you need to pay attention to. So, again, week two is almost done, which is great. We go back to seven to four next week, and then we go RCO training, and then we're done. So, again, a lot of stuff, though, that I'm talking about in these videos are specific to Norfolk Southern. Um, if you're applying for CSX, it might be different. If you're applying for the BN or the UP or a class three somewhere, the training's probably definitely going to be different. Um, as far as the class one railroads go, the training regiments are pretty much the same. They all have a school you go to for at least a few weeks and you take their curriculum and then you go to the job. If you're applying for a position on the class three railroad, it's most likely going to be a lot more just on the job training versus going to a class for a certain amount of time and then going out onto, onto the job. Um, that's how it's been at, you know, at the class three that I was just recently at. It was just more on the job training than anything. But yeah, it's been great. 
in, and, and as far as I know, actually, this is going to be the last CT class that Norfolk Southern is going to be running for a little bit. Um, they're kind of going to be slowing down here. So if you are interested in joining the railroad, you know, industry, I would get on it now because I don't really foresee them doing too much more hiring for conductors uh, in, in the next year or so. And that's just my personal opinion. It's not anything based off of any type of announcement, you know, from Norfolk Southern. That's just my personal opinion. Um, again, the rain gear, the boots have saved my ass these past few days. Because, again, we've been just working in the wet, in the suck, um, the past two weeks. And even at the end of week two, I can still only count on one hand how many dry nights or days we've had out there working. Uh, and of, all, of anything, the boots have saved my butt because they're waterproof. And once my feet get wet, I, I'm just not a happy person. So invest in good boots, waterproof if possible. Spend a little bit extra money to save yourself in the long run and get yourself a good pair of wet gear because you will definitely thank yourself later when you're out there uh, working in the wet. Um, last night, a perfect example, it was like a drizzle all night long. It wasn't too bad. And uh, we were doing our simple industry switching and spotting, and we had just finished. It was my time to go to finish up the move and spot the last two cars, and we had to take the last two cars off the switch or off the siding up to the switch take them down the main and spot them in a certain area on the main and right as I was about to go and I climbed up on the ladder and was given a radio call to go ahead it just downpoured just let loose and I was like you've got to be kidding me but it is what it is and then I had radio issues because my mic got wet and I had to, and I had to take another radio and then that one got too wet and I had to take another radio so I was stuck out there longer than what I really want it to be um, but it's the nature of the game so all I gotta say is come prepared to have a good time learn do the job well and um they're they're here to make you succeed they really are they they want to see you succeed they, they want to put out a good product back into the division you know um, because if you go through conductor training and you get back on the division and you're a screw up you're gonna be like what was this dude even doing down you know in, in school like he passed everything fine now he's up here you know making mistakes um the the the, the thing is is you need to if you're going to make mistakes you need to do them down here so you can be corrected on them and get it out of your system versus making mistakes back on the division. Um, if you make mistakes down here, it's a controlled environment for the most part, and nobody's going to get hurt. You make mistakes back on the division, you're going to kill yourself or you're going to get somebody else killed or hurt. So thing is, don't be afraid to make mistakes down here, but get them corrected before you get back on the division. Because up there, it's not going to be the trainer that's going to be calling you out on it. It's going to be your division superintendent. It could be your yard master. It could be your train master. It could be anybody of higher power. Um, and they won't be afraid to say you're done because as of right now, the way that it works is we're still on a conditional offer of employment till we complete training. Once we're on the division and still doing uh, on the job training, we're in a probationary period to where we can, you know, I don't say this would happen, but if we sneeze the wrong way, we could be let go. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but depending on the severity of a mistake that you make on the division, we'll get you fired. Um, they have no problem doing that. So that's just kind of the, the nature of, of the job. So anyways, this was week two. I'll give you a week three um, video next week after, after we get through everything, once we get our evaluations done and we get our final testing and stuff done. So stay tuned for video three.